It is said that computers are digital cities, various devices working together to function as one unit. Unlike cities, which require roads for transportation, computers use pathways to transmit information between components. In the early days of computers, parts, like the CPU and the RAM, were not contained within a single IC board. They were mostly separated in individual cabinets. Information traveled from one cabinet to another by bundles of wires called a bus bar, which later became to be known as a bus. There are two main designs of a computer bus. It can consist of one or multiple lanes. Each lane is a single wire connection, and how data will be transmitted will vary according to the number of lanes. So let us now take a look at the architecture of the parallel and the serial bus. A parallel bus uses multiple lanes to transmit information. Data is first broken down into smaller pieces which are then sent across each lane. This works well for many situations, especially when transmitting information like a memory address. So by now, you are probably thinking, does the number of lanes within a bus equates to its size? Even though it's fitting to say, one lane equals one bit, in modern computers, where size is a factor, this method is impractical. Because as the number of lanes increases, so will the area that is needed. For example, a 32-bit bus will require 32 lanes, and a 64-bit will need 64 lanes. To keep circuits small, multiplexers were implemented. This process divided, say, a 32-bit address into two halves, and then transmitted them over two clock cycles by a 16-lane bus. This method improves the processing power, but at the same time keeps devices relatively small. The parallel bus remains the dominant mode for transmitting information within the computer. Components like the RAM and PCI connected devices all use parallel buses when communicating with the CPU. But in the future, this dominance may decline due to another kind of bus. Not all devices use multiple lanes when transmitting information. Some stream the information one bit at a time across a single lane. A bus that only uses one lane to transmit is called a serial bus. Initially, serial buses were slower than parallel buses and were mostly used for long distance communications. At first, this choice was mainly because of the cost. It is less expensive to run just a single wire than it is to run multiple wires in parallel. But as signal integrity and transmission speeds improve, and the fact that parallel buses are more prone to electromagnetic interference, serial buses are also now starting to show up in short-range communications, which were once reserved specifically for parallel buses. Currently, serial buses can be found in connections like PCI Express, USB, and SATA, and this list will continue to grow for the foreseeable future. The design of the computer bus has changed over the years which has started out as bundles of wires, are now integrated connections within microprocessors and computers' motherboards. Before the 1980s, major components in a computer were connected together by a single bus, called the system bus. To reduce cost and space, the system bus had three functions. A data bus, which transmitted data, an address bus, used for finding specified locations, like within memory, and a control bus, which dealt with operations, for example, reading and writing. As integrated circuits continued to get smaller and smaller, faster, more efficient bus architectures were implemented. But though the system bus has been phased out for the most part, it still can be found in certain embedded systems. By the mid-1980s, CPUs started to use the North Bridge and the South Bridge, also known as a chipset, to communicate with components. This arrangement gave certain components priority over others. The North Bridge was connected directly to the CPU by the front side bus, also known as the FSB. High speed components which required the highest priority, like the RAM and the Vidya card, were connected by their individual buses to the North Bridge. The South Bridge, on the other hand, dealt with the slower or lower priority connections, like USB, SATA, and Ethernet. 
This can be illustrated by the fact that the south bridge was not directly connected to the CPU, but instead was connected to the north bridge by the internal bus. The arrangement of most of least importance made systems more efficient and much faster. So buses are important to computers as roads are to cities. Their presence create a unified environment that can function as a single unit. And as systems continue to evolve, so will the architecture of the bus. And that's all for now. For more tech videos, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching.